Hi, my name is Painter Master Karen Boniker, and I'm happy to be introducing you to a wonderful new brush pack called Snow. And in the winter months, we think about snow falling on the ground, frost, icicles, and I'm hoping that this particular brush category will be your go-to brush category when you think about painting landscapes with snow or just using some of these brushes to create some wonderful effects in, in existing paintings that you've already done. Now, this is a snow uh, landscape that I created using many of the brushes within this brush category. So what I'd like to do right now is take you through how to work with these brushes to give you an idea of where to go with them and how to use them. So I'm going to just go ahead and add a new layer here and I've got a few extra layers open because they're layers that I want to show you some special effects. So the very first brush we're going to start off with is called Driven. And Driven is a highly textured brush and I'm going to actually pick a very light color here so you can see this. I'm working on a new layer um, and as I start to scrub in you can see how it creates kind of a foggy effect, kind of a, a almost a blackout effect, effect with snow. So it would be something that you could apply to a landscape painting in terms of creating that very atmospheric look to the painting where you wanted to develop, you know, the look of fog or, or even smoke. And remember that when you're working on a layer, it gives you that opportunity to go on and work with what we call composite methods which can change the overall look and to work with the opacity slider where we can actually bring that down, still have a hint of that effect coming through, but not at quite as strong. So that first brush again is called Driven. The second brush we're going to look at is a real fun one here and um, I have that one set up on a special layer because I want to show you how to work with this. Typically, um, when you begin painting with it, and I'm going to change this um, back to default so you can see this, if we put opacity up, if I put very fine pressure on the brush, this brush is set to pressure, so you're going, going to get just a very small little line of dots. But as you start to put firmer pressure on the brush, you can see how it it begins to apply the brush stroke in more of a random way. Now, one of the things that I thought would be pretty with this is uh, whether you're working on a painting or a photo, if you wanted to apply what we call that bokeh effect, then let's go ahead and change that composite method to overlay. And we'll pick a nice, uh, you know, real pretty blue color here and start to put in those brush marks and you can see how we do, we do this. And then what we'll want to do is bring the opacity down on the layer so we're just getting some of that texture coming through. And this is what we call a bokeh effect and it can be done very easily in Painter and it can be done very easily once again by using the flurry brush. The next brush we're going to be looking at is called Frosty. And you'll notice when I first use this brush, um, we're going to again go up to a new layer here. This brush really has a lovely effect for creating texture. If you're working with a photograph or an existing painting and you want to apply some extra texture to it, this would be a great brush to use. The next brush we're going to look at is called Frozen. And Frozen is an interesting brush to use in terms of creating texture within a painting or creating the look of icicles um, uh, and little ice crystals hanging um, off of different parts of your painting. The other way that I like to use it is I like to create the effect of frozen snow or ice on ponds and this brush can you know can really come in handy for that particular effect so you can see here that I'm working on a new layer using a different variations of blue and lighter blue and even going to uh, white here and using it just to create the effect of 
uh, ice and snow that's kind of relatively settling on the, uh, the pond in the foreground here. So you can see that it's a nice textural type of brush. Then again, um, working with a composite method or a opacity, I can bring the opacity down to minimize the effect, or I can even go to something like uh, screen blend mode and then bring the opacity down to get more of that look of, you know, the ice settling on the pond. Okay, so that would be a lovely way of working with this brush. And we'll take that layer back to default. And we'll go next to the brush called Ice Crystals. And this one, in its default state, I'm going to show you a couple of ways to work with it. It is set to what we call gradient color variability. And Ice Crystals, let me go back here and change that and come down to the layer that I've selected for that. You'll notice that it's going to be in its default stage picking up color from gradient. Now if you want to open the color variability panel you will simply go to window, go to brush controls, brush media and choose color variability and it will open up this paddle panel for you. At that point you can set your brush from gradient to simply hue saturation and value or RGB and uh, paint with any color that you'd like. So this again is coming from gradient. The gradient panel then to open that there's a couple of ways to get that gradient panel open quickly. One of the ways is to come over to your interactive gradient, select the preset, and then come down to this little icon here called Show or Hide Gradient Panel, and that will open it up for you, and you can simply work from there and choose the gradient that you'd like to work with. Otherwise, you would go to the Window, Media Panels, and Gradient, and that will open up the Gradients panel. You can see that I have swimming pool selected for my first gradient and I'm going to select my brush now and on that ice crystal layer I'm going to actually create some ice crystals on the edge of the snow. And uh, the, a really quick way of working with this is to, you can go back and forth or you can just apply a quick dab to get the effect that I'm achieving here. You can always change the size of the brush and uh, again if you wanted to go from gradient and change it to simply a color then just change it to hue saturation and value and then you can go in and add some lighter colors if you'd like as well. The other option of course is again to work with what we call overlay composite method and you can create some different effects that way. Soft light is another one where if you want a more, you know, a very soft effect to that uh, ice crystal brush. The next brush we're going to look at is called Icicle and again this brush is set to hue, saturation, and, and value. However, I like using it uh, again from gradient because it does create a real interesting uh, effect and you can create these nice little edges and the look of icicles. Just a little dab, just a quick little dab creates these little icicle effects on some of your, you know, uh, some of the bushes that I have here. Or if I wanted to just add them along here, I get kind of a textural effect. So it's a fun brush to work with and you'll enjoy working with it with different color variabilities as well. The next brush is Large Flakes and of course no snow scene would be uh, complete without snow. <laughs> so let's go ahead and let me see. We'll go ahead and delete that layer and open this one up and we'll pick a nice um, almost white maybe with a little bit of blue in it 
And the way that I like to work with this brush, and I'm going to show you this, is I like to work with the large flake and the small flake together. So I'll choose a small flake brush first, and I'm going to add smaller brush, uh, smaller flakes on one layer. And then I'm going to add a new layer directly above that, then go to the large flake and use that, use the large flake to add the bigger snowflakes coming down. And I'm pretty careful about this one. I don't want to overdo it, so I'll use it very lightly. And again, if I feel I need to work on the opacity, I can bring the opacity down on that layer as well to give more, more of a natural effect to it, the piece. The next brush is called Powder, and this one in default is set pretty big, so it, depending upon how you want to use it, you can always use it as a, a nice effect, uh, working with composite methods, or bring the size of it down and work to just add this really nice puffy uh, snowfall effect. So I'll probably go a little bit bigger with that. And if you put firm pressure on the brush, you're going to get lots of saturated color coming through. And light pressure, you get more of a blending effect. So you can really create that look of, of uh, soft fallen snow. and then soft pressure, and you can blend. Some of the ways I might use it would be, you know, to add maybe little bits of snow on top of these rocks. And just, you know, emphasize the side of this little ledge here with snow. Use your Alt key to sample color so that way you can continue to mold and form the shapes that you develop for your snowfall. That's powder. The next one is called Settled and this brush um, I really like in terms of using it to uh, as more of your uh, detail brush. So if there were little areas where you know I might want to add a little more highlight or detail, then I would use it there. I like to use it in a small size uh, if I want to pull out the effect of branches or trees in the distant. And I'm just pulling directly up and just creating the shape of trees in this background area here. The next brush is called Shadow, and Shadow I would use, again, a, a nice blue color, but you want to keep that you know, value kind of on the light side. Uh, always consider your opacity if the brush is a little bit too strong. This brush I use basically for creating shadow effects under the snow. Um, if the opacity is too much for you, bring it down and work with a softer opacity on the brush. That shadow. The next brush is called Sleet. And this one I am going to do on a new layer here. And I usually will, let me minimize this a bit here. I usually start up at the top and just do really strong, quick brush strokes. And this is sleet. And again, if I feel that it's a little too strong, I just want the effect of maybe sleet coming down. Definitely use your opacity slider to bring that effect down a little bit. 
Next we have Small Flake, which I showed you. The next brush is called Snow Globe, and this is a beautiful brush. I like using this one. Um, say, for example, I wanted to add maybe the look of blowing snow around the house here. And what I do is just a quick brush stroke. This is set to glow, so you'll want to uh, pick some beautiful colors that are going to work well with, with the effect that you want here. And then just subtly draw it back so you don't have too strong of effect, but you have that feeling of motion of the snow being blown. This is the effect that uh, you would want to achieve with this brush. And a beautiful, beautiful brush. And finally, the last brush we want to look at here is called Winter Moon. And there's definitely a way to work with this brush as well. I'm going to add a new layer and I'm going to set that layer to screen, composite method. And I'm going to actually create a nice big brush here, or nice and big, because I really want this to really shine in the sky here. And then color-wise, um, I'm going to go with a kind of a blue color here. And then I'm using my mouse on that layer, and I'm just going to dab it a couple of times to create that kind of glowing effect. Then I'm going to add a new layer, and on that same layer, I'm going to again change the uh, composite method to screen. And this time, we'll go with a little bit lighter value still. But this time we want a much smaller brush size, so we want to uh, bring the moon in right in that glow area. So again, I'm going to go ahead and use my mouse and click a few times right in the center of that glow. And now what I can do is bring the opacity down on both layers to where I like the effect and I feel it's giving me what I want. And then I can end up with something that I really like, a beautiful snow scene. This is the brush pack called Snow, and I hope you'll enjoy working with it. Again, beautiful ways of incorporating these brushes into existing landscape paintings, creating new snow landscape paintings, or using them on photos to create some beautiful textural effects. Enjoy!